G'day legends, g'day superstars, Peps here. Now, if last week's set of games was history, round two is a bit of a mystery, but tonight is the gift, and that's why it's the present, because tonight at 7.30 p.m., it's going to be the St Kilda Football Club taking on the Magpies to kick off round two of AFL football. And are we excited? Both these teams, we could say their fortunes in officially round one were a little bit dicey. The Magpies have gone two and zero, sorry, zero and two so far in season 2024. And the Premiership hangover is definitely in effect if they lose to the Saints this weekend. Hey, the Saints were pretty bold against Geelong last week down there at GMHBA, aka Pork Barrel Park, as I like to call it, tax our funded. And I reckon they're a chance of causing a massive upset, but there's only going to be one thing that's going to stop Collingwood not winning tonight. If their forwards do not fire, good night, sweetheart. It's time to go. I'm giving them one last crack. I think that they'll beat the Saints. Don't be surprised if this is going to be a narrow game because I think deep down in my heart, they could take this one out, the Swans. They could take this one out, the Saints. So I'm reckoning approximately two to three goals for Collingwood, but don't be surprised if the Saints get across the line. All right, 7.40 p.m. tomorrow night at the Adelaide Oval. It's the Adelaide Crows versus the Geelong Cats. Now, Adelaide, really disappointing against Gold Coast last week. They only played about a quarter, uh, not even a quarter of a quarter of football to get themselves back into it, left it completely late. Geelong were awesome down there at GMHBA Stadium. But I just think that the Adelaide Crows at home are just going to be a little bit too strong for the Cats. They need to get off to a good start. They've had everything going their way last year, except for those close losses. They need to get these wins if they want to play finals. Otherwise, 2023 and 2024 are going to be merged into one season rather than separating. So I'm going the Adelaide Crows by two goals at the most. But I will say, as we've said before, the Cats have no reason why they can't go over there and dominate that round of football as well and get another W on the board. But the game at 1.45 p.m. at Marvell Stadium on Saturday, March 23, between North Melbourne and the Fremantle Dockers. It could be the lowest attended game for the entire season. We're already going to be having it in round two. Uh, the Dockers were great last week. We know what they did uh, to Brisbane. North. They had a crack against GWS, and that's all we can ask for, but they did fall away quite late. So who am I going to go with? Well, I reckon North could be a chance. That's a small one if their back line can hold up. But I just think the Dockers, away from home, they want to show their supporter base that last week just wasn't a fluke, and they can win away from home. So I'm going with the Fremantle Dockers to win by this five or six goals, but don't be surprised. Once again, I've been saying this for the first three games. This one is a little bit closer than we actually expect. I'm interested to see what Nick Larkey is going to be able to do. All right, 4.35 p.m. at the MRCG. Hawks versus the Ds. Hawks were very gallant against uh, Essendon last week, but if it wasn't for really bad kicking in front of goal, they would have won simply. The Ds, they bounced back, and it just goes to show that their first game against Sydney wasn't that bad at all after what Sydney did to Collingwood last weekend. I think the Ds will win this win. This one by five or six goals. They got their mojo back. Their ball movement was a lot slicker, a lot more chipping around, a lot more going at the 45s, trying to break through the defence. One thing I was really surprised by is the fact that Melbourne normally kick out to the left-hand side of the park every single week. They didn't do that. They normally go long down the line. They didn't do that. They tried to run the ball. They were a lot slicker by hand, and that just meant that the forward line had a lot more options to work with. And Nick the Wizard, Watson, and Gentleman are going to have another week to him. Mitch Lewis is an absolute gun, and I love what uh, John Newcomb is doing in the middle as well. Sicily shouldn't be paying. You kick someone. Good on your AFL for stuffing up another. But what I'm going to say to these listeners is that the Ds will win this one. It could be five goals. It could be more. But just remember, in the same game last year, Hawthorne came out after halftime, kicked six in a row, and brought an absolute blowout a lot closer and then fell away at the end. So they do have the capacity to score and score quite quickly. But I'm going with the Ds to win that one by five goals. All right, 7.30 p.m. at the SSCG. The number one team in my eyes at the moment has been the Sydney Swans. They've done it against Melbourne. They've done it against Collingwood, and they're playing Essendon this week. 
Essendon were pretty good against the, the Hawks last week. Uh, Stringer needs to perform again. Uh, Martin in the middle is going to make a massive difference as well too. And I also like Perkins running through the middle as well too. But I just think Sydney at home, going to be way too strong. I don't think this is one that's going to be a five or six dollar. I think it'd be around about maybe three to four. It could be quite tight, but they've had some cracking battles up there at the SCG. But I just think the Swans are going to be way too strong, and they're going to take home their third win on the trot. All right, Sunday, March 24, Western Bulldogs versus the Gold Coast Suns. Here is my upset for the weekend. The Gold Coast Suns have had two great wins over the first couple of weeks. Even though last week's they did let themselves down a little bit, these are the games that they have to win. The Western Bulldogs were poo against Melbourne. Totally got outplayed. This one is down at Mars Stadium. So it isn't the Western Bulldogs' home ground, but it is their home away from home, if you know what I mean. I fully expect the Suns to play that type of football against the Bulldogs. And if the Bont doesn't fire, if Norton doesn't fire, which happened last week, and if Libba doesn't fire, they're going to find it really hard to stop a rampaging Gold Coast. Gold Coast are going to win this one. They're going to win it by about four or five goals. And it's going to start to apply that blowtorch to that person called Mr. Beverage. So there's your first upset for the weekend. Woof, woof. We'll be like, woof, more by the time this game is finished on Sunday, 1 p.m. on March 24. All right, the Richmond Tigers versus Port Adelaide at the MCG. I think Jamie the J-Dog Wallace will be heading down this particular game. So if you see him, Give him a high five and tell him that his work is sensational on that lace out. Richmond, really gallant against uh, Carlton last week, but unfortunately with Gibb just going down and Presti doing a hamstring as well too, they're going to find it, I think, a challenge to beat a Port Adelaide. There's pretty much uh, needing to win at the MCG. They don't play there all that often throughout the year. They'll be excited by the experience, and I think that they'll take this one out. And I reckon it might get a little bit ugly towards the back end. I think this could be a seven or eight goaler if Port Adelaide play the football that they're supposed to play. But it doesn't surprise me if Richmond make a lot closer. There are a few people down, and that's where I think they're going to find it a bit challenging. And playing a hardened body team such as Port Adelaide, I think that they'll do it very, very easily. All right, last game of the weekend. It could be the most embarrassing loss for anybody this year. How would you be being the West Coast Eagles having to come across the rampaging GWS who are, in my mind, if I said that Sydney were the gold premiership favourites, the Giants would be playing them in the grand final if it was played at the moment because they are cracking under Adam Kingsley. Jesse Hogan looks fit. Callum Brown is amazing. Toby Green is a freak. Tom Green is a freak. Sam Taylor is a freak. Like you, look, I could just keep going on and on and on. This is what we've been promising from the GWS for so long, and I think that they're going to take this one out quite easily. Harley Reid made his debut last week. Serviceable. Oscar Allen is out for quite a number of weeks, and that is going to make it a massive differential from the goal-kicking prowess of both teams. It's going to be simply, this, is, this could actually get to 80 or 90 points if GWS do what they're supposed to do. I'm tipping Jesse Hogan to come out and kick another minimum of seven to eight goals this week. He's looking trim. He's looking taut. He's looking terrific, just like the orange tsunami. And that means the Brisbane Lions and Carlton have both got buys at the right time. Brisbane need to regroup and figure out what the hell has gone on over the first two weeks. And Carlton have been pretty good themselves getting those first two wins. But just by a kick as well too. So they've got a plenty of work to do to really nail games. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. That's tip outs round two tips for a massive week of football. We are trying to get to a thousand subscribers on our YouTube channel. So please click the bell, subscribe, and make sure you like, tell all your friends, tell all your people about the great content that Lace Out brings. I know it's how you want your footy. And good luck for your team this weekend.